Hi, everyone. This is a video to help get you started with Surdes Pi, which is a Python package for Surdes modeling and simulation, and it'll be helpful for the homework assignments in this course. First of all, I'd recommend that you download Anaconda, which is a distribution of Python that's super helpful for any kind of data science purposes, and it's what I usually use when I'm working with Surdes Pi. But if you have Python already downloaded, um, then and you use something different like Jupyter Notebook or something, you can go ahead and work with that. The only thing is that you need to be using a Python version 3.7 or newer um, for Surdes Pi to work. Uh, personally, I usually use the one that comes with Anaconda right now, which I think is uh, Python 3.9. So once you download Anaconda, it'll, it'll have include a whole bunch of software. Uh, and once that's set up on your computer, you can go and open um, the Anaconda PowerShell prompt. And the Anaconda PowerShell prompt, you'll be able to check uh, what Python version you're using. So Python version, I'm using 3.9.7. Um, and you can go ahead and run kit install certes pi. So first, it'll go ahead and install all the requirement packages like SciPy and NumPy and Matplotlib and such. Um, and then it'll install SeriesPy version 1.0. Um, and once this is successfully installed, you can go ahead and get started uh, using it. So this package is, you can see uh, it's uploaded to pypi.org. Um, pip install SeriesPy is how you download it. And then also it's maintained in this GitHub repository. So if you want to check out the source code, uh, you can download it and take a look at these different files, which have all the functions that you might find helpful for the homework assignments. So the um, IDE that I usually use with Surdes Pi is Anaconda 3. So I'm just going to open that up. or spider rather. So here's spider. Um, and it's nice for, for doing data science things because it's got like, uh, it's got these tabs so you can navigate files. Here's where your matplotlib plots will show up in the plots tab. Um, you can see the different variables that you're using. And it's also got this console. Um, and so I'm gonna go to files and navigate to where I have the homework assignments for this course. So right now we're looking at homework one demo. Um, and so this should introduce you to all the functions you need in order to complete the first homework assignment. So the first few lines are importing modules like SerdesPy, NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. Um, and then the homework assignment is to create a, um, a waveform, a transmitter waveform, and pass it through a low pass filter. Uh, so this first section is all about creating the transmitter waveform. Um, the first thing that we need is some binary data. Uh, we'll be using 2PAM signaling in this uh, demo, but I think you need to use 4PAM signaling in the actual homework assignment. Uh, so first, when I'm making my binary data, I'm going to use the uh, PRBS function in Surdes Pi. Now, this stands for pseudorandom binary sequence, and it's a special type of pseudorandom sequence that has a bunch of nice properties um, that make it really good for testing out digital communication systems. Um, you can do some research on it or look at the source code for how exactly uh, it works. Um, but in this line of code, I'm just going to generate uh, the sequence and the number associated. So we're using PRBS 13. That means that the sequence is going to be 2 to the power of 13 minus 1 elements long. And 2 to the power of 13 minus 1, we can check it with uh, binary data dot size is um, around 8,000 elements. And if we take a look at binary data, uh, you can see it, it consists of a bunch of zeros and ones in a NumPy array. So this is the data that we're going to be using in our transmitter. The next thing we're going to define the voltage levels corresponding to one and zero. So a zero will be transmitted at a negative one volt on the transmitter, and one will be one volt on the transmitter. Um, and then we're going to define the baud rate voltage waveform. 
um, using this uh, NRZ input BR. BR stands for baud rate because it's sampled at one, one uh, element of the array is equivalent to one two pan signal. Um, and NRZ is just uh, not returned to zero. It means the same thing as two pan. Uh, so I'll run this and this line. And so now you can see, if we take a look at signal um, here we are. Uh, the ones in binary data correspond to ones in signal BR. Um, now they're floating point numbers, so they represent the voltage. Um, and the zero represents is represented by negative one volts. Um, now we're going to oversample the signal uh, to form a time domain signal with better resolution. So we're going to we're going to um, use 100 samples per signal. So each two pam symbol uh, will will be over 100 samples in the um, in the array that represents the signal. So 100 samples per signal. And then we're going to use the numpy repeat function uh, to oversample our baud rate signal to 100. Uh, and now, where the first element of um, uh, signal dr is 1, that means that the first 100 elements of, of signal will be 1. Uh, and so if we take a look at signal, um, the size of signal, it's 100 times greater than the size of our binary data and the size of our signal at the baud rate. Just um, we're going to define the data rate of, of the transmitter at 1 gigabit per second and also calculate the time per unit interval. So that's stored in UI. Uh, and then also, because our signal is oversampled at 100 times per UI, uh, we can define the time per sample as dt. Now uh, we've got our signal and we know um, what the time difference between the samples of the signal are. And so we can calculate, we can plot an eye diagram uh, of our transmitter waveform. And so I'm going to go ahead and run this line. Oh, I didn't, didn't run uh, this line first. Okay, um, and so here's the eye diagram of the transmitter, ideal square waveform, um, and you know each each element or um, at each transition between a, a minus one and zero one voltage level, it just jumps straight up to to one, um, and the time per unit interval is like uh, uh, one one thousand picoseconds per unit interval. So now that we have our transmitter waveform, uh, we're going to filter it with a low-pass filter. So our approach is going to be to first construct the discrete um, transfer function of the, a low-pass filter, then find the impulse response of the transfer function, and we will filter the signal by doing a convolution between the, the ideal transmitter waveform and the impulse response of the low-pass filters transfer function. Uh, so a couple parameters. First, the bandwidth frequency. Let's just set it at uh, 500 megahertz. Um, uh, and then um, we need to define the frequency range for constructing our discrete transfer function. Um, and that's the max frequency. Now, we're setting this to be 1 over dt because when we do convolutions between two time domain signals, we have to be very careful to make sure that the time step for each of the two time domain signals is the exact same. Um, because if not, it doesn't work. So we're going to be using convolutions a lot in these homework assignments. And always make sure that your, your time step is the same for the two signals that you're convolving. Uh, so if we set the max frequency to be 1 over uh, dt, then when we do the inverse transfer function, it'll work out the way we expect. Now, this is a frequency in radians per second. And we use the SciPy signal uh, frequency freaks uh, function to create the discrete transfer function h. 
uh, at all of the frequencies between zero and our max frequency. Um, so we can run this one and we get H, which is like a complex value discrete transfer function. If we take a look, H, uh, yeah. So you can see each, each element has a complex value. And defining the frequency in Hertz, run this line. And then I'm just gonna run this whole cell to, to plot the frequency response of our filter that we've just defined. Here we go. So it's like a low pass filter, one pole at 500 megahertz. And so you can see that minus three dB frequency is there. And then it rolls off at uh, 20 decibels per decade um, after our cutoff frequency. Now we're going to find the impulse response of this. And there is a function in Surdy's Pi to do this. It's basically taking the inverse discrete Fourier transform of uh, the, the transfer function h. Um, but first, it constructs the two-sided frequency response uh, in negative and positive frequencies, and then takes the inverse Fourier transform of that. So we're going to go ahead and do that and plot the impulse response. So this is the impulse response. Um, you can see that it's like an exponential decay function, which is what we would expect for the inverse Fourier transform of a one pole system. And uh, we can just do a quick double check here that our time step in this one is the same as the DT we set in uh, when we were creating the, um, the transmitter waveform. So DT, dt is a 1 times 10 to the minus 11 seconds. And then if we take a look at here, this is our time vector called t for the, um, for the impulse response h. So t, the first element is 0. And then the next element for time is 1 times 10 to the minus 11. So these match up. Uh, and that's what we want. Uh, and then finally, to find our filtered transmitter waveform, we do a convolution between the signal and the impulse response. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, run this cell, uh, and it'll also plot an eye diagram so we can see the difference. OK, there we go. So here's our 1 gigabit per second 2 pam signal after the convolution with the uh, impulse response of this transfer function. Uh, and so you can see now, instead of sharp edges, we have like an exponential um, rise and fall uh, to the new voltage levels. And this is, you can see that the, the eye opening is shorter and uh, narrower than it is in the ideal transmitter waveform. So hopefully this gives you um, all you need to know to do the first homework assignment. A few things I'll add. Um, we just did 2PAM signaling. I think you'll be doing 4PAM as well. And so instead of the PRBS uh, function, you could use the PRQS, uh, pseudorandom quaternary sequence function of SERDISPY. Um, and that'll generate a random sequence of, of numbers with uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3 instead of just 0 and 1. And then equivalently, uh, when generating the baud rate signal, uh, you can use um, the PAM4 input BR instead of NRZ input BR um, with voltage levels. Like these are the standard PAM2 voltage levels, but for PAM4, it would be minus 3, minus 1 volt, 1 volt, 3 volts. Um, so thanks so much for listening, and good luck with the homework.